All right, I'm gonna make a very large hyper tangent from the four-part video series, which I will complete. This is just two of things that are going on in my mind. First, let's talk about political parties. There is no I this libertarian party. I'm against all political parties, and I gotta explain myself why. Well, for starters, most of these people are identity philosophers. I mean, they're identity beliefs. Their beliefs come from identity and not philosophy. That means that philosophically, they call themselves a uh, libertarian, but they could be a... Uh, they don't really have any philosophy, they just say they are. And that's what happens a lot. You see these inconsistencies where as soon as one party does something that the other party did and they disliked, they all of a sudden like it. For example, with Bush, he was doing his bailouts, extending the Patriot Act, extending the wartime. Now Obama does that, and Democrats, which previously hated that, now like it. And um, another thing is that these political parties don't contain any philosophy in them. They don't have a consistent philosophy. For example, the Republican Party in the United States is conservative. However, the Republican Party, maybe in Europe, yeah, Europe, that one's not conservative. That's Marxist. And around South America, the Libertarian Party isn't free market. It's socialist, too. I don't know if it's communist or Marxist, I don't know which. Somewhere around like Cuba and other places, S South America. Yeah, let's stay away from geopolitics. Although, that does give me some new ideas. Okay, so, what else? What else am I going to talk about besides why I dislike getting to political parties? Oh, yeah, and why is it that most people talk about these who claim they're part of politics? They care about politics. They're talking about these parties because, as you know, some people like butter, some people like margarine. Margarine. They like the phony crap. Like getting into fake politics, which is just name calling. So that's my problem with most people. And why it's hard to find people to talk about politics, like go on the internet a lot and say shit. Now let's go down to another topic Marxism. Specifically socialism, or less specifically, emergently socialism. And I'm talk about how there is no equality, there's no equality in socialism. What I mean is that in socialist places like Russia, there are people who gain higher jobs than others, people who gain more wages than others. It's all interdependent. For example, how do I get a better job than my friend next to me? Easy. He gets a 55 on his transcript in communist economy. I get an 85. He ends up a farmer. I end up... Hmm... Let's see. An assistant manager. So I outclass him. No, well, vice president. Let's say it's something like that. That would make more sense. And then, what else? What else? And how do I? And let's say another friend next to me, on the opposite side, also gets that 85. He also gets the same occupation. How do I become better than him? Financially. At that point. I'm in an absurd system because 
socialists because they have no price system operate on the value of their labor which is subjective so they make valuations so let's say it's based off the number of projects I take in so I see that he takes five projects I go and make it ten and I get a higher wage see so that's the problem with socialism it's pseudo economics when you reach this pre-marginal no utility point and that's why I dislike it so it's sociologically screwed up because you're locked into this system where really there's no quality you could say there's in general equal opportunity but let's say that the innate characteristics take over so innately I have a higher IQ than my friend so but it's not that by far it's still relevant he gets the 82 I get the 84 and all of a sudden I outclass class him in my job he becomes a salesperson I become manager assistant manager that's what happens. That's the problem. There's no finite way to calculate who should be what. How much. That's why it's so disproportionate. How much lawyers do we need? Well, we don't have enough lawyers. How much farmers do we need? We don't have enough of them. And then we have a bunch of. Let's see let's say janitors we have too many janitors we don't really need these much janitors so what should we do we should like try to find more of these people all right guys so whoever becomes uh, we don't know how much lawyers we need but whoever is almost good enough to be a lawyer you're free to switch you're free to do switch uh, we're getting too much it's becoming disproportionate again what do we do how about we do some regulations you need to take a test yeah and it keeps going back and forth back and forth and so there's isn't this regular or peaks of people who are on top and people who are on the bottom. It's more of a weird class thing that it's less consistent. It's less logical. So the class system does exist contrary to ideas of communism and it always will exist but, can you say, these aren't egalitarian tribes. They're places of more than 148, more than 250 people. There's going to be a point where that quality will become impossible, and rightfully so.